forage fish are the small pelagic species, anchovies, sardines, herring, that all the larger fish and birds and mammals feed upon. These are northern anchovies, the major food source of almost every major predator on the west coast up here. That's a zero age uh, anchovy they are right there. This is an older one, probably, probably, it might be just a little over one, maybe two years old. They don't live very long. This is it, this is buoy 10, just right over there, about 100 yards behind us. This really signifies the beginning of a 15 mile long fishery and the beginning of the journey for salmon as they come back up river. And we always hear about their journey down to the ocean, but what we don't hear much about is what happens when they get to the ocean and spend that three to four years. That's the time that they're, they're growing and really dependent on a strong forage base. That's why when you put a salmon on a grill, you'll see that oil coming out of it. That oil is all from forage fish of some sort or another. My name is Bob Emmett. I'm a fish biologist for NOAA Fisheries in Hammond, Oregon. We've seen this around the world. When these eastern boundary currents all of a sudden are not productive, and then you have a crash in the forage fish. And when that happens, you have starving birds, marine mammals that aren't being fed well, and they'll be starving. You have the salmon runs will just decline. So everything crashes if the forage fish are not there. So you see how that angle is? Yeah. That's, that's what's gonna give it that crippled fish look when we rig these up out in the water. We have two main concerns about forage fish. And the first involves those species that are under active management now. And in, in many cases, that management is not perfect. And so we're working to improve it. You got a fish on? Yeah. Coming right towards the boat. Let's get the net, Tom. The other main concern we have is that there are a lot of important forage fish species that are less familiar to the public and that even marine scientists and managers don't have very good information on. It's the mouth you look at, right? Yeah, see, that's a black mouth. Black mouth. So that was a Chinook salmon, a small Chinook. It was a hatchery fish, but too short to keep. So that fish lives for another day. You literally see thousands of boats out here all going for the same thing, and that's salmon. And Interestingly, if you see a flock of birds which are looking for the same thing we are, they're, you know, they're looking for the bait fish. Oh yeah, excellent. There's our target species, right there. That's our myrrh. One of the research projects that we have going is we're looking at what these predators are eating, which species of fish they're relying on as their food source. So here we're sneaking up on a group of feeding pelicans, feeding brown pelicans here. Understanding what these animals are using as their food base helps us understand what makes that whole ecosystem tick. Once we have the bird safely in the box, we're gonna radio on the boat, let them know we're coming back, and then we'll tie up, we'll hand the bird over to the people on the mothership here. Yesterday we'll evening, we took one of our vessels out for a scouting trip to see if our target species, common birds, were in the lower estuary. We saw a few birds. However, after the sun went down, we were unable to locate these birds in the estuary around the Columbia River. So here's a common myrrh right after it's been captured. You can see it's already been very cooperative and regurgitated. Several small fish here, which look to be like a mix of anchovy and possibly smelt. This is a non-lethal technique to get stomach samples. Birds naturally regurgitate their stomach contents to feed their chicks. It's a safe procedure that has been used in a number of different areas. These are the stomach contents from one common myrrh captured off the Columbia River. This looks like primarily anchovy remains. I can see at least six different tails or vertebral columns. Here you can see the bones from an anchovy where the flesh has been digested away. The rest of these fish are a bit fresher. They still have flesh on the tails. We have digital images of bones from fish, and we can compare the images where we know the identification of the fish to determine what fish we have in our sample. 
commercial fishers and sport fishers are starting to understand how important these fish are to supporting wildlife and healthy fisheries. So we are trying to bring awareness of the role of these fish in the food web so that people can properly manage these populations. So how's the fishing been, Bob? My name is Norm Ritchie. I'm with the Association of Northwest Steelheaders, and I've fished down here in the Astoria area since I was a teenager. Well, you can see right behind you here millions upon millions of dollars in boats and other equipment. That drives a huge economy here. A lot of these boats are built specifically for fishing, and they're built here in Oregon and the Northwest. That's what people are spending their money for, is to the opportunity to come out here, enjoy the outdoors, and catch a fish or two. Sport fishermen and commercial fishermen for salmon and tuna and that sort of thing are on the same page on this issue. We need to uh, protect those fish to at least understand the timing and the size of the populations and know that uh, we can take them at certain times in certain numbers without harming our salmon, steelhead, tuna and other larger fish. We're by no means saying let's not fish forage fish. What we're saying is let's make sure we do it in a way that allows for a healthy ocean at the same time as, as meeting the needs that we have. Everybody wants those forage fish because that's the natural prey for all these fish and that's what they eat. And so if you want to catch those on a hook and line, then you want to put an anchovy on your hook. Caught here this morning is about a 20 pound upriver bright Chinook salmon. And here's where the adipose was. Uh, that's clipped off. That tells us it's a hatchery fish and we can harvest these without impacting the wild runs. So it's a win-win for all of us. Can't wait to get this on the kitchen table.